When you come to Philadelphia, there are so many beautiful and historic sacred sites to see. You'll be amazed by their diversity and symbolism. Old St. Mary's Catholic Church in Society Hill is a quaint little church that's full of history and astonishing sacred art. The subway station here at City Hall in Dilworth Plaza is one of the main hubs for SEPTA transportation. From here, you could go anywhere. A quick trip on the Market Frankfurt Line to 5th Street, then a short walk a few blocks south will take you to one of the city's first churches. July 4th, 1776. 56 men signed their names on a piece of paper that changed the world. That day, in this building, our founding fathers signed the Declaration of Independence, cutting ties with Great Britain and founding the United States of America. The world has never been the same since. Three years later, on July 4, 1779, members of that same Continental Congress came here to Old St. Mary's Roman Catholic Church for the first ever public religious commemoration of the Declaration of Independence. Our country's first president, George Washington, came here for a solemn mass of thanksgiving for victory over the British. And when he died, members of the Congress gathered here for his memorial service. Many illustrious people walked through these doors, and some were even buried in its cemetery, including Commodore John Barry, the father of the American Navy, Thomas Fitzsimmons, a signer of the Constitution, and Michael Bouvier, stepfather of St. Catherine Drexel. The cemetery is significantly higher than street level because in 1793, they had to add a layer of dirt to meet the growing burial needs as a result of the yellow fever epidemic. Built in 1763 as an extension of Old St. Joseph's Church, which is just a block away, Old St. Mary's Catholic Church, as it's known today, eventually became a parish in its own right. As the Catholic population of Philadelphia grew and Philadelphia became a diocese, it eventually needed a cathedral. And from 1810 to 1838, Old St. Mary's was it, Philadelphia's very first Catholic cathedral. While there were about 40 Catholics in the city when Old St. Joseph's was founded in 1733, by the time Philadelphia became a diocese, there were about 30,000 Catholics and 11 priests. At that time, the diocese included all of Pennsylvania and Delaware. Things have changed since then, of course. Today, Philadelphia is an archdiocese. Its area is much smaller in size, and about 520 archdiocesan priests serve 1.5 million Catholics. The interior of the church as we see it today dates to a renovation made in 1979, but many of the church's earlier artistic and architectural elements were kept in place, like the beautiful wood baptismal font that dates to the 18th century and is still in use today, and this beautiful chair, which was the seat of Bishop Conwell when Old St. Mary's was a cathedral. These chandeliers were originally used in Independence Hall. This is one of my favorite things here at Old St. Mary's, the Pieta, the image of the Blessed Mother holding her dead son. It has the same name as Michelangelo's Pieta because Pieta means compassion in Italian, and every image of the Blessed Mother holding her dead son bears that name. The ceiling is painted blue with gold stars dotted about, and in the center is a beautiful image of Mary being assumed or taken up into heaven. Although this church is named St. Mary's after the Blessed Mother, Catholics rarely call her that today. As the Mother of God, she has a unique position among the saints, exalted above them all. As the angel Gabriel said, and St. Elizabeth reiterated, she is full of grace, blessed among women. Today, Old St. Mary's is a bustling parish and a popular place for weddings. Just a short walk from Old St. Mary's Church is one of my favorite places to eat in Philadelphia, City Tavern. A popular meeting place for our founding fathers, the City Tavern was where they celebrated the first anniversary of our country's independence on July 4, 1777. Here, award-winning chef and my friend, Walter Stabe, faithfully recreates the cuisine, ambiance, and experience unique to 18th century colonial America. Check out all of our videos to explore the exciting history of Catholicism in Philadelphia. I'm Diana Vonglon, the Faithful Traveler. Thanks for watching, and thanks to all of our sponsors.